everybody, Chris here with Clean Spores Woodworking Shop, back with another in our video series on contour sanding. In today's video, we're going to cover a topic that, well, we get a lot of questions on, and that's how to assemble a sanding mop. It's not that difficult, and we have a lot of options available whether you buy the components individually or whether you buy them in a starter set with all the components grouped together. Either way, they're going to assemble the same, and so that's what we're going to do right now. Assembling a sand mop can be done in a number of ways. On the 4 inch, which you see here, I filled in every single layer all the way around. On the 6 inch, we're going to do this a little differently. We're only going to do partial fill, and we're going to use a series of spacers on this double mandrel. 4 inch mop is made up of 1 inch wide strips 4 inches long, which makes the 4 inch diameter mop. The 2 by 6 mop is made up of 2 inch wide strips 6 inches long. Now, yours should look like this with all the holes already punched out. If yours looks like this, no worries. It's already perforated. Just simply press it, pop it out. It's all part of the manufacturing process. Now the first thing you want to do once you get your strips oriented is figure out which mandrel you're going to use. And once you do that, take the nut off one end. Now these do come with two washers, so you do want to take off the nut and the outer washer that's closest to the nut. Leave that furthest one on there. In some cases, it may be helpful to find something to hold that mandrel while you do your assembly. But it can be done without it. And if you plan on using a stabilizer, now would be the time to put the first one on. And if you haven't seen our sand mop starter video, the stabilizer essentially makes the mop more of a burnishing tool than a tool that follows contours. So in this case, we are not going to be applying that. We're going to go straight ahead with the strips. Now how this is done, you take the strips and put them back to back. So you take two strips back to back, and then you lay those on the mandrel. That is your first layer. Quick tip here. When you're assembling a mandrel, it does help to have something to hold that mandrel in place while you do the assembly, whether that be a clamp, a vise, or any other thing that can affix that without it moving. In this case, I am going to be using the keyless chuck to hold that in place on top of the counter while I do the rest of the assembly. So, your first layer, you want to make sure that the sides are even and everything's kind of laid out normally. Step two on this is do the exact same thing, taking two strips back to back, and you want to lay those crisscross from the other. And again, kind of align that as you go. It's a lot simpler than waiting till the end. Now you've done two layers. Next, repeat the process again, two strips back to back, and lay those on there crisscross from those. So you want to do those at a diagonal. And that is the third layer. Repeat the process again and fill in the remaining gap going the other direction. Now at this point you could just leave that alone or you could continue to fill and go all the way around and fill in voids again like we did with the one before. But in this case we're just going to do those four and that is going to be our section. Now at this point, I am adding a spacer in this. I do want this to be a little bit fluffier. Now you can add spacers anywhere along the route. You can do it every other strip, every other layer, every, every 12 layers, it really doesn't matter. In this case, I'm going to do a complete run and then add a spacer. And all you do from there is repeat the process. And you just continue filling that up. Every time I laid the four layers down, I put a spacer. Do my crisscross layers again and put another spacer. And because this is an extra long mandrel, we could literally stack as many strips on here as we want. You just rinse and repeat until you get the mop full the way you like it. Now, because this process can take a little time and unloading is not very fun, we do recommend getting a mandrel for every grit you plan to use. This saves a lot of time and is very helpful whenever it comes time to changing grits. One way you can do that is if you have a dowel, you can just press all of those off onto a dowel or a bolt, and then when you need it again, you can refill it. But in this case, I would still recommend getting a separate mandrel for each grit you plan to use. And so in this case, we're going to fill in the last two gaps, and then we'll cap it off. And in case you haven't heard so far, you put two strips back to back, and you lay them on, filling in the gaps. And once you get that last strip on there, you can sit back and enjoy that sense of accomplishment. But you're not quite done. Let's cap it all off, put the washer on the outside, and then tighten down the nut. 
Now, the beauty of having this double mandrel is this does allow for a very thick mop or thin, however you want. And if we would have added more spacers more frequently, this would have certainly filled up the gaps and created an even more of a spacious, more fluffy mop. And once you get that all snug down, uh, you can take a wrench, pair of pliers, whatever you got, and just finish that tensioning process. Now you do want to make sure that you're holding the strips in place because the last thing you want is to start having strips slide around. And as you can see with the one by four, it's a very flat end. With the two by six, using that double mandrel, you do have some thread sticking out. So let's finish that off and get something to tension that down. Now you might be looking at this mop and thinking, man, this is uh, not the mop I've seen in pictures before. Well, you'd be right. This is a brand new mop. Notice all the factory edges. Everything's sharp. Everything's crisp. You can see with all the components, mandrels, spacers, stabilizers, the different sizes, the different grits, there's really no reason why you can't use these in your shop. Customize the one that's right for you. Now, because this is a new mop, you want to take some time to break those factory edges. So grab some scrap wood and just have some fun. Be aggressive and get all those little perforations loose and get those fingers fluffy. You want to go from looking sharp and crisp to looking like this. To learn more, visit us at woodworkingshop.com or any of your favorite social media sites. You can also contact us at 800-228-0000 and someone will be happy to help. Well, if you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe so you'll be notified of future videos as we release them. Well, thanks for watching and have a great day.